Hi, my name is Stephanie, and today I wanted to talk to you about the idea of there being one true Christianity. This actually comes from an interaction on another one of my videos where basically someone was saying that I was employing the no true Scotsman fallacy by saying that an openly atheist person cannot also be Christian. Basically, it boiled down to the commenter believing that really, as long as someone says they are something, they can be that. So we can't say that you can't be a Christian atheist. Then I saw a video by another atheist who was talking to fellow atheists, telling them the fallacies in their own arguments against Christians and said that there is no true Christianity. Therefore, people wouldn't be able to pull some random scripture and come at a Christian saying, you're not following this random out of context scripture, you're not a true or real Christian. So I was thinking that this may perhaps fall under that line of thinking, the idea that someone can be an atheist Christian because there is no true Christianity. But is there one true Christianity? I think the intricacies lie in what is important and what is not that important. This is the part where everyone screams at me and says every tiny part of the Bible is equally as important as the other, and I'm not saying that any part of the word is not important, but just bear with me. It's gonna be okay. In every religion, there is some requirement to how to be a part of that religion, whether that is just saying that you are. So what does this look like for Christianity? It's actually pretty simple. Believe in your heart that Jesus died for your sins and confess him as Lord. An atheist, someone who doesn't believe in God, cannot meet this requirement because they can't call Christ Lord if they don't believe that he exists. And in that matter, can't meet the requirement of believing that Jesus died for their sins. But then we have Christians pointing the finger at each other, saying, you've missed it. You're not a real Christian because you don't do or believe this thing or you do or believe this other thing. So I thought I'd look into what is biblically required to be a Christian, a baby Christian, brand new Christian, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to put these scriptures up on the screen while I read them to you. Acts 16, 30 through 31 says, and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy house. Acts 2, 21 says, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 2, 37 through 38. Now this part is in reference to them seeing people baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and then you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. This isn't listed as a requirement to be saved, but you have to be saved before you can receive the Holy Ghost. Romans 10, 9 through 14 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Repeatedly, we see that the basic requirement for being saved is to call upon the name of the Lord. But this does imply more. Saved from what? Saved from the consequences of our sin. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So to be a Christian, you believe that sin and its consequences are real, because otherwise you wouldn't have anything to be saved from. Then you believe on Christ and what he did for you on the cross, which was pay the price for your sin. Someone who understands that they've been living a life full of sin and that God has sent his only son, referencing John 3, 16 here, to come and pay the price for their sin, which was death, which they themselves earned through their sinful actions, 
They would want to repent and turn away from that way of living. That means they're more than just sorry that they did that. They want to turn away and repent and change and live differently. So they call upon the name of Jesus, which again implies a belief in God and also in what Jesus did on the cross because otherwise there wouldn't be a reason to call upon his name. There is more to living the life than just having believed, but a lot is inherently implied here. Someone who is calling Christ their Lord and accepting his free gift of salvation is going to see how good God is and be filled with love for him. They would want to show God how they love him and they'd want to thank him for what he did for them. They'd want to live in a way that honors God and obviously when they turn and repent from sin, they'd want to know how to live differently, how not to be in that same place as they were before. And if they believe in Jesus, they probably believe in the word because it's the word that they were hearing to find out that Jesus is the savior. So they would probably take some interest in his teaching teachings and want to follow that. We can always go deeper in God, like receiving the Holy Spirit or being able to honor God in the tiny things because we've mastered the big things already. The basic prerequisites for being a Christian is understanding that sin exists, we have sinned, and that sin earns us death, but Jesus Christ came and gave his life as payment for the death that we earned to cover our sins and forgive us. So we repent for our sins, believe what Christ did for us on the cross, and call him our Lord. Technically, anyone who meets this standard at any point by repenting of their sins and honestly believing in their heart that Christ did what he did and honestly calling Christ their Lord is a Christian. The word talks about our disagreements that we will and definitely already experience in Romans 14. We see different churches and denominations getting upset over trivial things like Sunday is the holy day to worship at church and Saturday is actually the holy day to worship at church. People waste so much time arguing about these sorts of things, but it's human nature. Does someone worshiping God in a side of a church on a Sunday rather than on a Saturday make them not a real Christian? No. There is much more to walking out a life following after Christ, but I think we can learn from understanding that anyone who is calling on the name of Christ, who is repentant and calls him their Lord, is going to do their best to follow his word and to honor him. While some people are going to place more importance on one part than others, mostly they do that because they're really good at those parts or don't have to struggle so much with those. It doesn't make someone not a Christian because they don't meet your standards. So at the end of all of this, what I wanted to say is that there is a basic requirement to being a Christian. That you believe in Christ and what he did on the cross and you call him Lord. Beyond that, we work with scripture as directed the best that we can and people aren't perfect. It is therefore not a no true Scotsman fallacy, however, to say that you can't be an atheist Christian because you cannot both simultaneously believe that there is no God and believe that there is a God. There are requirements for being a Christian. However, they don't lay in things like what day of the week you go to a building. Thanks for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so and hit the notification bell if you want notifications every time that I upload. I upload to this channel every Saturday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. I hope you're having a wonderful week and see me in my next video.